Hello, my cuties. It is almost that time. Spooktober Halloween is coming up in two days. Yes. And I thought I'd do a spooky video. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the real story of Marie Laveau. Now, Marie Laveau is famous for being New Orleans voodoo queen. But was she really evil and mystical as she's been portrayed? There's nowhere in the world quite like New Orleans. No other no other city is visibly encapsulates the mix of old world and the new. And no other city is so obviously displays its belief in the supernatural. And of course, no other city has a share of stories that would seem impossible anywhere else but the Big Easy. Take, for instance, my cuties. The legend of Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen of New Orleans, a black priestess of astounding beauty. Madame Laveau wielded tremendous power in her community and rumors of her magical abilities were so persistent that visitors still visit her grave and leave tokens in exchange for small request. Voodoo is as big a part of New Orleans history is a big part of New Orleans history. Although it's vastly sorry, here, <laughs> vastly different from the pop culture perspective. Well, zombies and dolls do make up a part of voodoo beliefs. In reality, voodoo is a combination of West African religion brought over by slaves. Now, the Christianity they adopted and Native American traditions, they blended in. Like the popular conception of Voodoo itself, Marie Laveau's legend differs a bit from reality. Born around 1801 to the freed slave Marguerite in a free and wealthy Blotano businessman, Charles Laveau, Marie was the first generation of her family to be born Free. Now, Laveau's great-grandmother came to New Orleans as a slave from West Africa in 1743, and her grandmother, Catherine, eventually wound up being bought by one Francois Pomet, a free woman of color and successful entrepreneur. Francoise. Francoise. I'm not sure I say that. It was not unusual for free blacks to purchase their own slaves, despite her reputation as a charitable woman and an important figure in the black community. Laveau would own several slaves. Now, Catherine was eventually able to buy her freedom and build her own small home where her granddaughter would become famous. After a brief marriage to another free part black, Laveau entered into what would be a 30-year relationship with a white Louisiana man with a noble French background, Christopher Glappin, or Christopher Christie Glappin, Glappin. <laughs> 
interracial relationships were also not uncommon in New Orleans. Hmm, go figure. Although the couples were forbidden by law to marry. Uh -uh. Yeah. Laveau was a devoted Catholic all her life and to her voodoo was not incompatible with her Catholic faith. The front room of her cottage housed altars filled with candles, holy images, and offerings, and she would lead weekly, lead weekly meetings that included whites as well as blacks where participants would dress in all white, then chant and sing and leave an offering of liquor and food to the spirits. Marie Laveau also saw individual clients, giving them advice on everything from winning lawsuits to attracting lovers. When she died, her obituary in the New Orleans Times claimed lawyers, litigators, Planters and merchants all came to pay their respects. Yep, and seek her offices. Although people of all races visited Laveau and attended the ceremony she led, the white community as a whole never accepted voodoo as a legitimate religion, which is partly why today it is still associated with the occult. Racism and a natural tendency for newspapers to seek out sensational stories led to the descriptions of Laveau's ceremonies as occult drunken orgies. Laveau was able to rise to such a prominent position in New Orleans through a combination of her strong personality, charity works, and natural flair for the theatrics. During her lifetime, she performed noble acts of community service such as nursing yellow fever, patients posting bail for free women of color, and visiting condemned prisoners to pray with them in their final hours. After her death in 1881, her legend only continues to grow. Whether Marie Laveau was a powerful priestess with supernatural abilities or simply a clever entrepreneur who knew the value of giving people the spectacles they wanted, she is doubtless a fascinating figure for having been a black woman with great influence in the Deep South during the days of slavery. And her rise certainly wouldn't have been possible anywhere but New Orleans. <laughs> well, my cuties, I hope you enjoyed that little tale and truth of Marie Laveau. And if you're ever new in New Orleans, stop by and pay your respects to Marie Laveau. You never know. <laughs> See you later, my cuties. Bye. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. <laughs> and leave a comment below if you want more videos like this. Bye.